So we have our rat here. You have your spinodeltoid coming up here. This is, uh, I don't like this rat for this. <laughs> I like you better. Okay. Spinodeltoid right there. And then right here you have Terrace Major. If you want to see infraspinatus, you have to shove both of those over and that muscle underneath is infraspinatus. Okay? And then we have cervical trapezius right here, which we pull back to show us rhomboideus, which is together until we pull that back to expose splenius with a P. Okay? Splenius. And then we had our thoracic trapezius right here and latissimus dorsi was all along here until we cut those and then we reflect those back. Then we have some, some serratus ventralis there and some latissimus dorsi up here and then above that we have erector spinae which are these thick bands of muscle that run down along the back. Right there. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Which one is it? Erector spinae. Okay. And then when you are, when you cut that kind of open, there's like this clearish, can you see that clearish tissue I was picking up? See that? That's aponeurosis. It's a specialized connective tissue that goes over the erector spinae. Okay. This down here is thoracolumbar fascia. Then we come down to the abdomen, and if we look at the abdomen, we can see that the, the muscle fibers are running in this direction. That means it's external obliques. If you pull really tight, see how you can see the fibers going this way? external oblique and then we peel this layer back and see how it's going okay yeah wait which way were these going yeah okay so yeah these guys sorry they're going this way if you pick it up you can see that when you try and separate it from the bottom part, the muscle fibers run this way. Then you look at this one, and it's running across my finger, and the muscle fibers are running this way this time. This is internal oblique. And then if you just flip this whole thing over, which we'll do next class, they run straight up and down. And that's Transversus abdominis. So the ones okay. that are running that way are the external, and then the internal, and then inside transversus. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we did sclerotis ventralis. Okay, you have your cutaneous <laughs> trunchi coming out here, and then not good for this one. No. Okay, so then we come down, we look at the arm, and we have this large, like, bulge right here. That's biceps brachii long head. And then if you look right above biceps brachii long head, in between my tweezers, no, this is brachialis, <laughs> which corrects a mistake that I made yesterday when I was saying the outlined in blue thing, mm -hmm. that's clitobrachialis. I was missing half a word. Okay. 
clitobrachialis because it's going across the clavicle and down to the arm. So brachialis meaning arm and clido meaning clavicle. Okay. And then brachialis is, right. and then brachialis is this tiny, tiny thing right there. Can you see that? That tiny muscle is brachialis. Um, we did spinodeltoid. Then we did clitobrachialis just now. now. You have omotransversarius, which is now coming, and you can see because we've moved um, the uh, cervical trapezius a bit, we can see how omotransversarius comes right across here. Before we could only see like this much of it. Now we can see it actually going up into the neck too. Um, then from the side view, you need to be able to see clido cervicalis, which is going from the clav clavicle to the cervical vertebrae and sternomastoid, going from the sternum to the mastoid. You need to be able to recognize that from either angle. And then we have to go left. It would be best if you did. I'm not going to say you have to for this, but for arteries, you have to specify right and left. Arteries, veins, anything that there's two of, you should specify right or left. Spe and lung too, the lungs. Be very specific about lungs. Don't we always name it the, an the animals right and left? Yes. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Yes, animals right and left. Um, okay, so that's it for this part. Okay. Now we can work our way from the neck down. We have digastric coming down here. Sternohyoid, sternum to hyoid. Sternomastoid, sternum to mastoid. Clido cervicalis, clavicle to cervical vertebrae. Now if we kind of just push sternomastoid out of the way, we see this brown line that's pretty thick in the back. That's um, omohyoid, because it's if you see it's going up to the same place that sternohyoid is going to. So they both insert on the hyoid. And omo because it's coming down from the shoulder. Do you see that? And then we have another new one, which is if you move sternomastoid out of the way, this way, and then clido cervicalis out of the way that way, you'll see kind of this little one right here. See that? That's clidomastoid, because it's starting at the clavicle where the clidocervicalis goes, but it inserts at the same place that sternomastoid goes. So clidomastoid. Okay. Um, that's it for those neck muscles. Then we come down and we look at the rat. One of you is better. Not you. Playing favorites again? Yeah. Hey, where'd my good rat go? There it is. So you have your pectoralis that was covering the outside right here, right? We lift that back and we have rectus thoracis right there. Yep. Rectus abdominis going straight up and down. Does that, that go all the way down or just that little piece? It goes to down to about right here, end of the sternum. And then to the side right here, we have scalenius this time with this SC right there. And then we have our serratus ventralis there. Okay. 
I think we did everything on this one. That's the one that goes straight up and down right here. And rectus thoracis goes right here. Okay. And then we go on to... We did most of this, I believe. Yeah. So we did splenius and rhomboidius, right? Okay. So now on to the back of the arm. Okay, so this one... Let's move that out of the way. You have... Right here you have subscapularis because it's beneath the scapula. On this side and wrapping around to the front over here, which I need to grab a different one. This part right here, wrapping around to the front right here, is supraspinatus. And like I said, you have to move these two over to see infraspinatus, which is between them. Subscapularis. And then teres major wraps around from the back over to the front right there. Okay? And then we come and we look at these muscles on the back of the humerus. Make sure you know the difference of where the humerus is versus where the scapula is. Okay? So you break that tensor fascia antibrachii, and you have triceps brachii long head, triceps brachii medial head and then you have your coracobrachialis which tends to be covered by a white nerve and some um, what's that called? and a arterina vein So you have coracobrachialis right there, and then you go down one and you have biceps brachii long head, and then, or sorry, short head, that's short head, because it's really tiny. Biceps brachii short head, and then biceps brachii long head, which comes and wraps all the way around to the front right there, and then on top of that, like I was saying, you have your brachialis right there. They, they're on top of each other? Well, it's like the biceps brachii wraps around and then above that, to more to this side of the arm, is the um, brachialis. Okay. Biceps brachii short head is right above it when you're looking at it from a reflected view of the arm. Okay. Right there. So that's short head and the bottom is Mm-hmm. And then the brachialis around it. Brachialis is on the side, yeah. Okay. And that's it for this guy.